Boilermakers picked up a couple of wins last week, knocking off Rutgers in Piscataway last Thursday, 68-54. Following that up yesterday with a 76-61 win over Northwestern. Purdue now 17-7 on the season, 8-6 in the Big Ten. Two more games coming up this week. Michigan State comes to Mackey Arena on Wednesday night for the Beat Cancer Pinkout game. That'll tip at 7 o'clock. And then the Boilermakers will head to a sold-out assembly hall down in Bloomington on Sunday for a noon tip-off against the Indiana Hoosiers. Good evening, everybody, from Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. It is the Katie Gerald Show. We'll be talking with the head coach about Purdue basketball, and I'm sure we'll get a few comments in about the Kansas City Chiefs as well. We're also going to be talking a little bit later on in the program with Lakin Hasser-Smith. She is director of video and uh, recruiting assistant for the Purdue women's basketball staff. Anastasia Kirby will be on as well. She is director of operations for the program. When we come back, though, we'll hear from the head coach. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Harden, three, and good! Third made three of the game, nine points for Cassidy Harden. She is three for three from outside the arc. So after a couple of quick threes, Purdue skips it. Another three for Harden, and it falls! Four for four. Swing across to Ellis, feeds it in. Nice little pass, and the layup good. Wonderful little Purdue play there. Back to Terry, feed in Harper, back to the basket, turns, shot off the window, no good. Rebound Terry, second chance effort, go. First field goal of the day for Laisha Petrie as well. She tips that ball, and another chance for her up, no good, but Abby Ellis there for the quick rebound. Now corner three from Ellis, up, and good. Watch out for the Aussie, she can get hot. So now the Boilermakers, Break the full court pressure with relative ease. Petrie drive to the inside. Around and in for Laisha Petrie. Long skip pass to Harden. Driving baseline laid up. And good. And one opportunity as Harden goes through the contact for the finish. He's got 15 with a chance to tack on one more. Oh, my apologies. They're going to call that one a, a travel. Two solid looks. That second one just connected for the Wildcats. So now Cassidy Harden kicks it out. Laisha Petrie for three. It goes. Now Northwestern speeding things up. Loud to the inside and sent back by Waltman. Phenomenal in this last stretch, holding opponents to just 25% from distance. And a nice little turn from Caitlin Harper. We were here in Mackey Arena against IU. She was called for travel three different times. And a nice block by Jayla Smith. Presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. And before we talk to the coach, we want to have a special welcome tonight. Alex Joyce of Rejoice Financial and his special guests who are in attendance at tonight's Katie Gerald Show. So welcome and glad to have you along. No doubt. Uh, let's talk first, because I know you want to get it, I want to get it talked about, get it done. Kansas City Chiefs, uh, tell me about your night last night, because you go home and you watch Chiefs, and it didn't look good at halftime. No, but still felt good. We just needed the, we needed the football. Um, obviously needed to score on the opening drive of the second half. Uh, Beth was over at the house and uh, sent her home at halftime, like, you haven't been here ever before, you need to go on home and let me watch this game in peace, and uh, got the job done. Uh, George Karloftis wins a Super Bowl ring, which is a good thing. Um, great thing. It's a great thing. And uh, George Karloftis had a heck of a season. We're going to talk a little bit about him on the Pro Boilers feature. But, uh, you know, you look at his life where he was a, maybe a decade ago, didn't even know that probably a football had laces. Yeah. And now he's a Super Bowl champion in his rookie season. Yeah, what a what a great fit for him to, to be drafted by the Chiefs. And, um, you know, their whole their whole defense. I mean, I you know, we're talking about a dynasty. We're uh, we're a lot of young guys. We don't have to pay anybody. So um, George is going to be special for for those guys. But, you know, just credit Andy Reid and Pat Mahomes, man, tough. All right, let's talk some basketball. Okay, okay, you had a pretty good ba I, we, we can do this the whole, the you, whole show. You, if you had want. a pretty good basketball week, too. You started it off with a trip to Rutgers, and uh, you win that one 68 54. 
you know, a game that you kind of took control of early. Never, you, you had control of it, but you never had total control of it until the last few minutes. Yeah, um, yeah obviously, anytime you go on the road um, and you play against uh, anybody in our league, right, it's going to be tough. And for whatever reason, our focus has been pretty solid on the road. Uh, we were able to jump out on them. They missed some shots. We got some rebounds, got out in transition. I thought Ricky was really, really good there, especially in the first half of just, um, you know, points in the paint and controlling the glass. And, um, you know, I think obviously they were going to make some runs. They made some shots, and Cass kind of stretched it out with a couple back-to-back -back threes. You know, we, uh, you look at a, a situation like that we had Thursday night in Piscataway, and this is coming off. You had 14,000-plus your last home game. They announced, I think, 1,100 or 1,200 people at Rutgers. I think they were counting people twice because there couldn't have been 1,000 people in the building. You had to bring your own energy. Did you feel like you were able to get the team up to where they needed to be throughout the entire game? Yeah, we actually talked about it, and, and watching them on tape uh, during the week, their crowd was – not very good and um, you know Laisha you know having played there saying that you know week, weekday games we're going to be tough um, in crowd wise so we just made sure we bring our own energy um, you know no matter we're playing in front of 1100 or or 17 2, 2, 2 um, we got to make sure we bring it. I did notice a few fans behind the Boilermaker bench and a lot of them had the number 14 jersey Ava Learn when we've gone out to the east coast has had some family members show up it's nice to see her hit a couple of baskets too. Yeah she was solid you know just we, we stay with her like just stay the course like you know do your job when you when it's your time to go in and, and take advantage of your opportunities. She came in, had two baseline jumpers, ran the floor hard for us. Um, between her family and uh, Michael's family out there, it was pretty pretty loud for the Boilermakers. Yeah, we had a nice uh, dinner the night before, and uh, it was it was nice to see it. You, you never know when you go on the road, especially you go away from home. And, and I don't know who we've got out in, La in Los Angeles. We're going to have to get some West Coast kids now so that we got some people to watch us out no, there. We're, we're looking, that way. we're looking. I, I understand. Uh, then you came back, and you changed things up a little bit. You told me in the pregame uh, you changed up your normal sun Saturday routine for a Sunday home basketball game. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about before how well we had been doing on the road, and we just spent a lot of time on the road together in the hotel. You know, film sessions, uh, meals are always together. And, you know, here at home, the, not that you have distractions, but you have a life too. And um, so Saturday, uh, push practice back. They went to breakfast as a team, um, came in, practice, and then we had a, a, a catered dinner together actually up in our office. And we ha we put on the Wisconsin-Minnesota game and just um, kind of let the, the group just kind of bond and talk basketball. Um, and, you know, it just seems to, seems to be working when we're on the road, so trying to create that, that same kind of environment. And, you know, it worked Saturday or Sunday, and we'll do the same thing tomorrow leading into Michigan State. Well, the good thing is you, you, you're going to have some more home games and some more road games, so you get to try this strategy all over again. But, the, you know, the success away from home, I, I think, has really been remarkable this year, the fact that you've got a winning record away from home and a really big winning record. Yeah, it's it's been really good. Our focus and, and just attention to detail, you know, you can hear them at, at dinner talking about the game plan, talking about it. Um, and, and here, right, we, we eat our pregame meal, and then everybody goes their own way. You know, at the hotel, they're, they're, they just stay there, and they, they, they spend a little more time together. So just trying to create that same environment. Um, you know, we've got two more at home, two more uh, on the road, and uh, we'll see if we can just keep replicating it. All right, we'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show after this, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Your offense and then maybe try to drive to the basket. Bates on the block, but Waltman with the follow and one. And I think that's been something that Rutgers has been trying to do. They just haven't been able to get Cornwell in good position to be able to make a play at the rim as Petrie there just drills that wide open three. Now meanwhile, Purdue has played nine players. Eight of them have scored already. As Jayla Smith pulls out a nifty finger roll. She's got seven points. They've remained in the man-to-man -man defense for the majority of this game so far. And one thing that I've noticed is Rutgers is not as quick as Purdue. They're a little bit late being able to transition just like that, leading to wide open shots around the perimeter. Game is they have really kind of clogged the middle. Every time Rutgers has tried to feed Harden, we've seen a few from Terry. Abby Ellis had one back in the first half. And there she is, one-handing it for Petrie and a buzzer-beating three. This Purdue offense. Another look at this work of art from Ellis and Petrie. That's nice offense. Figure you need 20 to get into the tournament. And Petrie blocked there by Smichael, but Harden gets a great look and knocks down three. Off the screen, Abby Ellis gets it. 
Another good ball movement. Petrie for three. It's good. Here's another look. Watch just the ball moving around the rim. Rutgers a little bit slow. Harden. Got it. Cassidy Harden's 200th career three-pointer. Ellis gets it to Harden, looking for another. She got it. Cassidy Harden into double figures. We've seen it so many times in this game. Watch, the ball goes into the post area, kick it back out. Someone's left wide open. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always a game day with a taste of Louisiana. By the way, this is our next to last show of the season. Last show coming up next Monday night at 7.10. So if you've been thinking all season about coming down, you've got one more opportunity to do it. Uh, before we get to uh, the game yesterday, we've got some questions here. John uh, writing in from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and Ira from Wisconsin. Uh, by the way, the 17th win yesterday guarantees a winning season for the Boilermakers, and that keeps your record of never having been associated with a losing team. Also, with your next win, you would join Lynn Dunn and Carolyn Peck as the only Purdue coaches to post win improvements in each of your first two seasons. Purdue goes from seven wins to 17 in year one, and now at least 17 in year two. So the, the uh, chart is trending in the right direction, as we say. Yeah, I uh, just want to keep the train on the tracks. And, uh, you know, uh, you can probably ask my family, too, about that winning record. I don't lose a lot of card games at home, too, so <laughs> keep it going there. Uh, Peggy in St. Louis has been a lot of, says there have been a lot of positive moments. Hope you'll be rewarded with a tournament bid after the Big Ten tournament. Well, that's the idea here. Uh, right now, the Boilermakers look like they're on the good side of the bubble, but that is a week-to-week -week proposition. Uh, John does want to know, when you have a winning streak, do you try to have the same pregame meal? Are you, uh, are you <laughs> the, the only question I always like to ask, are you superstitious or just a little stitious? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm more superstitious than probably anybody. Um, I do the exact same thing. I don't know if our kids do, but I don't... Uh, I don't change up a whole lot, and if we lose, then everything changes, and you try to find the, the right pattern. I've been like that since I was a player. Uh, Sheila wants to know how many wins in the remaining four regular season games in Big Ten tournament do the Boilermakers need to ensure a, uh, have to ensure a berth in the NCAA tournament? It's really hard to tell. Right now, Purdue is number 42, I believe, this morning in the net rankings, uh, but if you finish, let's say you win three out of four, just for the sake of argument, go 11 and seven in the Big Ten, that's going to put you at 20 wins on the season. That probably is, uh, is going to be a good spot going into the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, it's hard to, you know, obviously you want to, you want to look ahead and, and try to map up all the, map out all, everything. Um, the, the best way to put it is like we've just put ourselves in a really good spot. Um, yes. and, and we've got to make sure we stay the course. Um, and, and our group has done a really good job of just making it 1-0 and 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 we've talked a lot about, like, now every game has to be a tournament game for us. We've got to play with every possession um, with just that sense of urgency that is, it is, you know, win or go home. And uh, our group has kind of bought into that here lately. And, and I think our last six, we're, we're five and one in our last six. And, uh, you know, good opportunity to, to finish strong. But uh, we're, we're welcoming a, a really, really good you know, the record is 13 and 12 or whatever it is, but Michigan State is a lot better than that. Uh, Tim says, fun following the team. I think we would agree, and he gives a boiler up. And then Lynn wants to know why the Northwestern coach had a technical called. Uh, it really was not on him. It was because when they broke the huddle and started play, they had six players on the floor. In the basketball, unlike hockey, you cannot pull the goalie yeah. and bring an extra player on the floor. Yeah, just uh, they just got a little bit anxious out there, and uh, we'll, take, we'll take the free points. It's, it's sometimes the officials will see that. Usually the officials will count up, but if they don't, and in this case uh, they, the, the ball went into play and the, the officials counted to six, and that's why it was a technical foul. So, so that was the reason. Um, I do notice that your coaches, some of your coaches, are always looking over at the other bench during a timeout, and there was a rule put in. I think it's been in, in place for a while, but it's really been – enforced a lot more lately if you don't get your substitutes in at the beginning of a timeout they don't allow them to come in yeah and I know uh, Joe McEwen yesterday was really upset a couple times because he tried to get people in or thought he got people in in time and they weren't in 
Yeah. I Actually, is it the first horn or the second horn? I know you've got to be there uh, before that horn. You have to be there before the first horn. Yeah, and uh, it just didn't happen for them, and I know he was he was visibly upset. Um, visibly and audibly upset. Not we did, at the referees, <laughs> I think our scores bench uh, took a beating yesterday, too, but uh, it's a home game, so hey. sorry, Joe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's been a long season for Joe McEwen. He hasn't had a whole lot of losing seasons, but it's been a tough one for yeah, him. Yeah, just so much respect for, for him, and gosh, they've had some really good teams there up yeah. there and um you know back from from when he used to coach at George Washington George Washington yeah and, yep. and when I was playing and he's just been always so great so good to me and uh really really respect him all right we're going to talk about that Northwestern game when we come back but we need to take a break it's the Katie Gerald show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield George has always been a big dreamer. He was talking about how he wanted to be the best NFL player when he hadn't even played a whole year of football. Let's go. Go Boilers. I'm the face of my city, co-signed by Diddy. Prove him wrong. Prove them wrong. That's big to me. People don't believe you. All right, <laughs> I'm going to prove you wrong. Keep it going. Carlottis is there. George Carlottis, the freshman. The crown jewel of this Purdue recruiting class. <laughs> what a play George by George Carlottis. He just kept the relentless yeah. pressure. Yeah. He didn't slow down at all. It's loose. Carlottis has it. He's at midfield. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Five. Touchdown. Oh. The <laughs> George Carlottis on the fumble return. to NFL draft. The Kansas City Chiefs select George Karloftis. Wow. Defensive end, All Purdue. Right. I'm proud of that kid. It's hard to make it through as a rookie, period. 17 games. But to get better every week at that position you know, is something. I mean, that's a, it's as much mental as it is physical, and, and he is relentless. You see him at practice. He goes 100 miles an hour at practice. He transfers that into games, so my hat goes off to him. It's Burrow facing the heat again. Karloftis, the rookie. <laughs> Walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Lafayette Limo, family-owned, women-owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare Airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Boilermakers will take on Michigan State on Wednesday and then head down to Bloomington to face Indiana. Right now, Indiana playing at Ohio State. 6-13 to play in the first half. Indiana leading that game 39-14. to The Hoosiers are rolling right now. Yeah, not surprised. Um, they, it was a battle in Bloomington a couple weeks ago, but uh, Indiana just, uh, wow, gosh, by far the best team in our league. Uh, let's talk about the Northwestern game yesterday, a team that you had beaten up there, and it was a kind of a strange game, the one in Evanston. You got a 14-point lead midway through the second. They had a big run late in the second, early in the third, and took the lead, and then you had to fight back. Yesterday, uh, a game that you, you couldn't quite pull away again until the, the second half, and the, really the third quarter was the difference. Yeah, third quarter was really good for us. Uh, I think we got out 24 points yep. in the third quarter. We had, what, 35 at halftime, thanks to Cass and Caitlin for just putting the ball through the hoop and giving us an opportunity to breathe there in the first half. Just, you know, really just not a lot of purpose there in the, in the first half offensively. Um, solid enough defensively, but... Uh, you know, we were fortunate that Cass and Caitlin had some, you know, Cass hits four threes in the first half and Caitlin has double digits already. But, um, yeah, we like when, when she makes shots. So, um, you know, we've uh, we got to keep grinding things out. And uh, here lately, defensively, we've, we've actually been pretty solid. 
Cassidy Harden hit the 203-point club for her career. It's a special club that you're a member of. Is there a special handshake, or did you give an initiation of any sort to Just, her? Just, you know, welcome her to the club. And, you know, Cass and I, we had to go back to that superstitious thing. I always walk out on the court and hand her the ball to, during warm-ups uh, to, before she makes uh, a three and before I go into the locker room and start getting ready. Um, and, and every day we've tried to figure out, like, the right – after she hits it, the right handshake. So, you know, she hit four, so we're going to keep with uh, two, two high fives with the left hand, two with the right and then I kind of tap her on the side. So uh, we'll see if that works uh, Wednesday. I'd, I'd, like, I'd like for four or, or maybe a little bit more, that too. would be even better. Uh, Caitlin Harper, I thought, was really solid for you yesterday. And the thing we see about Caitlin, and, and it's this case with all great post players, is they're able to use both hands efficiently. Yeah, Caitlin is really, really skilled in there. And uh, we've talked about it all year, just her ability to score. And, um, you know, stretches the defense out. But uh, she, she's done a really good job, and, and yesterday was – um, you know, nothing nothing different. Yeah, it was an, another game yesterday, really the same thing on Thursday. You looked down the lineup one through nine, and you got contributions really from everybody. Yeah, good, solid game. Um, I, I thought our, our, our bench um, struggled a little bit there in the first half. In the second half, they, they came out with a different mentality. You know, Ricky Madison, um, you know, Jalen and Ava were just a little bit different, a little bit more locked in. But, um, you know, we moved Mads uh, off the to – Six games ago, we moved Matt um, to the bench, and you know there's just a, a calmness about when she's on the floor, and we've been really good um, here in this stretch. So uh, credit for her to just accepting that role and uh, being being a leader with that second unit. I mentioned a milestone of 200 for Cassidy Harden. Laisha Petrie is closing in on 2,000. She is 12 points away from 2,000 in her career. She would be the 40th player with Big Ten ties to hit 2,000 points. That's a lot of scoring. Yeah, I don't care a, what level. Yeah, it's a lot of points. And, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll gladly take her getting over 2,000 here down the stretch and um, hopefully a, a lot more than that. You know, and Alicia Petrie, I think, is getting back to where she was early in the season where she's able to score different dimensions. She can hit the three-point shot, but she can also put it on the floor and take it to the basket. Yeah, we, we're trying to put her in some space where she's not having to, you know, dribble the ball a whole bunch. And, you know, teams just load up on her uh, and, and make her make her play in a crowd. So getting her to play with her back to the basket a little bit, um, trying to isolate her in situations. And, you know, Wednesday is a good opportunity opportunity for us to, to kind of post her against some smaller guards, but uh, making sure we're giving her enough space to work uh, because she can score the basketball. All right, we'll give the coach a breather here. We'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this. We'll hit, talk to Lakin Hasser-Smith after this break on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Le Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open, got it! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales, holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope the year! For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about them Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Mentality, right? Drag them into deep waters, make them uncomfortable. Russell Park, Russell within your game plan. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show here at Walk-Ons. Again, we'd like to welcome Alex Joyce of Rejoice Financial and his special guests who are in the attendance tonight for 
the uh, Katie Gerald Show, and they're talking with the head coach right now. We are joined by Blake and Hasser Smith. She is director of video and a recruiting assistant. We talk all the time about it takes a lot of people to put a basketball team and a basketball program together, and Lakin is one of those folks. Uh, a local products played here at McCutcheon High School and then went to Marion and played for Katie Gerald. Let's talk first about your high school career. Pretty successful with the Mavericks. Uh, give me some of your highlights from your high school days. Yeah, um, so in high school, I mean, we just had like a really good team. Um, the last three years um, in high school, we won sectionals. And then um, my senior year, we actually lost by one point um, in regionals. Uh, so that kind of stunk, but you know, all, t all together, we were a really good team. So, how, how many times have you relived that game in your mind? That that because I know players, and this is natural for athletes. You're going to remember the losses usually a lot more than you do the wins. Yeah, I mean, that one was rough, um, especially you know, ending your senior year with that. Um, but it was a little bit different at Marion, so I'll well, definitely take that. It ended your high school career. It did not end your collegiate career. You got to play for Katie Gerald's at Marion and win at Marion. You won national championships and then joined the coaching staff. Yeah, um, so um, she came in my sophomore year and so I got to play with her the last three years which was awesome. Um, and then we won nationals my senior year so you couldn't end any better than that. And then um, after that I got on the coaching staff and got to kind of like learn from her from a different perspective. Uh, when you win a championship, whether it's, I don't care if it's a high school level or any level collegiately, how do you describe that feeling when you, when you know that you've, you've put everything you've got into it and you've won the last game, you get to cut the nets down after the last game? Everything leading up to that is just, it's worth it at that point. So um, all the sweat, the tears, everything. Had you planned on going into coaching after your, high, or after your college days were done? Um, I th it was always something I was like interested in doing, and um, I'm, I'm blessed to have that opportunity to been able to do that. What have you been able to learn from Katie in terms of basketball and, and how the game should be played and how the game should be taught? What has Katie Gerald's taught you uh, in terms of how she's how, how do you, how does she coach that you can relate to what you can do on the floor? Um, she's just she's coached in a way of like just teaching you, uh, you know, how to be tough, how to just push through things. Um, just how to be the best version of yourself, like on the court and off the court. Um, a lot of things that you learn through her coaching, you know, you, you take and you, you put it in real life situations as well. How excited were you when Katie took the Purdue job and said, hey, by the way, we'd like you to come with us, oh, come back it, to your hometown. It was awesome, you know, just being back home, you know, close to family and then also just getting back into the basketball again. Um, I, I was blessed. I was, I was very thankful for the opportunity. All right, so, Lakin, what are your responsibilities? What are you responsible for with this basketball program? Um, so I do the video. Um, I basically make sure, like, practices, shoot-arounds, games, they're recorded. I upload them. I do a lot of, like, kind of clipping. Um, and then a little bit on the recruiting side, I kind of help, you know, make sure we're sending out to our, re to our recruits, getting out um, different graphics and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and the, the – the whole recruiting game has really changed a lot, isn't it, with social media? And it used to be, back in the old days, people would get letters, and you get maybe 100 letters from college coaches. Now it's, it's a whole different way of trying to reach these kids. Yeah, um, there's a lot going on there. I'm still you know, like learning each day with all that, but um, definitely just the biggest thing is just to stay on top of it. Back to the video for a minute. The, the technology, I think, has grown so much over the years. Uh, how easy or how difficult is it to put together the clips that you need to do? Because you need to do it pretty quickly after the game. I mean, they want to see after a game that they've just played what they did well and what they did not so well. Yeah, so um, Synergy and Huddle, they make it really easy for you. Um, it's pretty fast turnaround of being able to kind of upload those clips and then just kind of code them and make sure whatever the coach is asking for to get those to her. I know basketball takes up the vast majority of your time, but in the couple of hours a day you might have to yourself, what do you like to do away from basketball? Honestly, just spend time with my son. Um, he, he'll be two in March, so um, he keeps me pretty much busy. He's actually here tonight. He's here so. tonight. I see him yeah, there. Yeah, giving Kirby some trouble, looks like. <laughs> <laughs>
she's she's not ready to give them away yet, but but this commercial break better get here pretty soon, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Laking, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, uh, thank you for what you do for this program, and uh, we're looking forward to having you here for a long, long time. Yeah, thank you. All right, Laking Haster-Smith with us. Now we're going to talk to Anastasia Kirby next. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Learfield. Harden, three, and good! Third made three of the game, nine points for Cassidy Harden. She is three for three from outside the arc. So after a couple of quick threes, Purdue skips it. Another three for Harden, and it falls! Four for four. Swing across to Ellis, feeds it in. Nice little pass, and the layup good. Wonderful little Purdue play there. Back to Terry, feed in Harper, back to the basket, turns, shot off the window, no good. Rebound Terry, second chance effort, go. First field goal of the day for Laisha Petrie as well. She tips that ball, and another chance for her up, no good, but Abby Ellis there for the quick rebound. Now corner three from Ellis, up, and good. Watch out for the Aussie, she can get hot. So now the Boilermakers, Break the full court pressure with relative ease. Petrie drive to the inside. Around and in for Laisha Petrie. Long skip pass to Harden. Driving baseline laid up. And good. And one opportunity as Harden goes through the contact for the finish. He's got 15 with a chance to tack on one more. Oh, my apologies. They're going to call that one a, a travel. Two solid looks. That second one just connected for the Wildcats. So now Cassidy Harden kicks it out. Laisha Petrie for three. It goes! Now Northwestern speeding things up. Loud to the inside and sent back by Waltman. Phenomenal in this last stretch, holding opponents to just 25% from distance. And a nice little turn from Caitlin Harper. We were here in Mackey Arena against IU. She was called for travel three different times. And a nice block by Jayla Smith. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Our next guest is Anastasia Kirby. She is the Director of Operations. I had to make sure I pronounced her first name right, because we just call her Curbs. We had Curbs on the Lake Show tonight <laughs> on the show. Um, another path similar, a little bit similar to Lakin. Grew up nearby here in Kokomo. Played basketball. Talk about your high school career. Give yourself a pat on the back. What did, what did you do with the Wildcats? Um, it was a, a pretty good time. My freshman year, we actually had a really good team um, that was undefeated uh, going into sectional. And then, unfortunately, we uh, lost to uh, Logan Sport um, in overtime. But uh, we, were, we were supposed to win the, the uh, championship that year and then ended up falling short. Um, and then we lost a couple seniors. And then my sophomore, junior, and senior year, um, I was able to put together a pretty good career um, with the Wildcats. And that's how I ended up at Marion. Well, it's a career that took you to play for Katie Gerald's at Marion. And you had great success there, winning championships there. Um, what was it about Katie Gerald's that made you come down to Indianapolis? Well, actually, Todd Bacon, the former coach at Marion, recruited me. But when I heard that Katie was coming in and um, from the some of the assistant coaches that were still there that helped recruit me, um, they talked to me about her. And um, I knew a little bit about what her career was here at Purdue and what she had done. And I was really excited to be coached by her. And then obviously being able to win two national championships um, was incredible. Uh, what was her coaching style then? Is, is it the same as we see now on the Purdue sidelines? Has she changed it all in the last few years? That's a great question. Uh, I, I think it's pretty similar, um, but I would say one of the things um, that's different um, with the players here at Purdue um, is the way she, Katie was pretty hard on us as a coach, and she's just as hard on them as well. Um, but I think she gives them um, more understanding, um, if you will, and I think that's great, especially with the, the way that coaching's moving and, and the way that uh, uh, athletics are going, sports are going. I think that's great. You decided to stay at Marion after your basketball days were done. Talk about the jobs that you had before you came here to Purdue. Yeah, I worked at uh, Marion University, my alma mater, for a couple of years, and kudos to Katie for helping me get that job. Um, she spoke with our athletics director and um, really gave me a, a good opportunity to work there. I was a success coach. Um, I also worked in the advancement office for a while at Marion. Um, and then after graduating, I worked um, for as an admissions counselor 
at a coding school, and then Katie gave me the opportunity to come here and, and work with the team. So I, I'm forever grateful to be here. Um, it's an incredible, incredible place to be, and, and looking forward to being here a long time. Well, Curbs does a great job behind the scenes. Probably one of the most thankless jobs of any uh, sports program is the director of operations, because it's kind of like a baseball umpire or somebody. The only time you notice them is when something doesn't go right, and thankfully, we haven't had a lot of those situations this year. So congratulations on a job well done in year one. Thank you. Thank you. What are the biggest responsibilities? What, what would you say if you had to summarize in a couple of sentences what you do on a daily basis? Um, lots of scheduling pieces, making sure that the team gets from point A to point B, that things are on time, the bus, hotel, meals, um, things like that. So at first, um, coming into this job and never being in a role like this, it was a little stressful. But honestly, now things are becoming a little more routine. And uh, it's been really, really good. I've had lots of help um, from Katie and the other staff members. So can't say enough about the support that I've had so far. One of the things a director of ops has to have is a pretty good weather app because you have to know ahead of time, is the weather going to be a problem? Do we have to change our schedule. We had that earlier this year when we had to go to Illinois a day early. By the way, thank you for getting me a hotel room a couple of days early. I appreciated that one. Uh, but you, you, you really got it. And you have to really have to be proactive in this job. You really do. Um, and But again, it's, it's not just something that I'm doing on my own. There's support from, from all areas. Um, whether that be uh, the charter um, company that's assisting with that, hotels, meals. So um, it's really a wraparound support. Although um, I do a lot of the work, it's multiple hands in it. Well, again, this is a job that I'm sure is all-consuming, but when you do occasionally have a couple of hours away from basketball, what do you try to do to relax? Um, you, key word, relax. <laughs> I, I try to relax. Um, I spend a lot of time with my family and friends when I do have uh, free time or, or just at home reading and, and just spending some time with myself. Anastasia Kirby, curbs to us. Thank you for the job that you do, and uh, look forward to seeing you here. I really hope they have a long trip at the Big Ten tournament coming Absolutely. up. Thank All you. All right, we'll have the head coach back. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Your offense, and then maybe try to drive to the basket. Bates on the block, but Waltman with the follow and one. And I think that's been something that Rutgers has been trying to do they just haven't been able to get Cornwell in good position to be able to make a play at the rim as Petrie there just drills that wide open three. Well, meanwhile, Purdue has played nine players. Eight of them have scored already. As Jayla Smith pulls out a nifty finger roll. She's got seven points. They've remained in the man-to-man -man defense for the majority of this game so far. And one thing that I've noticed is Rutgers is not as quick as Purdue. They're a little bit late being able to transition just like that, leading to wide open shots around the perimeter. Game is They have really kind of clogged the middle. Every time Rutgers has tried to feed Harden, we've seen a few from Terry. Abby Ellis had one back in the first half. And there she is, one-handing it for Petrie and a buzzer-beating three. This Purdue offense. Another look at this work of art from Ellis and Petrie. That's nice offense. Figure you need 20 to get into the tournament. And Petrie blocked there by Smichael, but Harden gets a great look and knocks down three. Off the screen, Abby Ellis gets it. Another good ball movement. Petrie for three. It's good. There's another look. Watch just the ball moving around the rim. Rutgers a little bit slow. Harden. Got it. Cassidy Harden's 200th career three-pointer. Ellis gets it to Harden. Looking for another. She got it. Cassidy Harden into double figures. We've seen it so many times in this game. Watch, the ball goes into the post area, kick it back out. Someone's left wide open. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time for our Pro Boilers feature where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. I stopped to the, put that segment into this because I want to talk about a couple people that I know you're excited about. One, George Karloff. This we mentioned George winning a Super Bowl championship yesterday. I think the 46th, I believe, uh, 
Purdue player in the Super or to play in the Super Bowl, somewhere in the 40s. I know 23 of the last 24 years has been at least one Purdue player playing in the Super Bowl. Georgia member of the All Rookie Team. Well, we talk all the time about the fact that uh, most college athletes are not going to go professional in their sports careers. They're going to go into something else. And one of your former teammates was in the stands yesterday, Dr. Lauren Miaton Connor. Uh, who grew up in New Orleans, uh, was a biology major here, an academic All-Big Ten selection. She wound up getting a Big Ten postgraduate scholarship. She was a finalist for a Rhodes Scholarship. She went to the Vanderbilt School of Medicine, and she is now Dr. Connor. And she does plastic surgery. She's located now in Nashville. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because with the game coming up on Wednesday, it's the Beat Cancer Pink Out game, a lot of the surgery that she does is reconstructive work after uh, people have breast cancer or skin cancer. Uh, great tie, and, and Lauren Miaton Connor is the example of what you want this basketball program to represent. Oh, absolutely. Um, Lauren was a, a, a great teammate. Um, you know, she, she always did what she was supposed to do. You knew she was going to be in the classroom getting it done, and uh, just so proud of her. And um, since I've actually been back here, we've reconnected a little bit, and, and she's going to be so instrumental in helping, helping me really get, um, you know, former players back here because there's, there's just something about being, a, being in the Purdue family, and, and, and Lauren's going to really help me. But, wow, like – you know, what she does, I mean, how incredible is that? Yeah. Like, I, what do I do? I, I stand on the sideline in my George Carl Lofty jersey and yell at the referees. I mean, that, and what she does is just incredible. Yeah, I had a chance to talk to her a couple of times in the last few years, and, and it, it really the work she does with cancer patients is remarkable. Yeah, just a, a great, great teammate, great, great human being. Uh, met the husband and kids yesterday and uh, just super, super proud of her. All right, let's talk a little hoops, and let's talk about that Michigan State game coming up because you had to go overtime to beat the Spartans up there, a game that you won despite turning the ball over 30 times. Uh, you, statistically, that's, a, that's an improbability. Let's not tempt fate again I, yeah, we're, on uh, Wednesday. Oh yeah, please, please. Um, we don't need to do that. The last couple games, knock on wood here, I think we had 13 at Rutgers, 10 yesterday, or yeah, 10 yesterday. What is today, Monday? Yeah, 10 yesterday. So um, we got to make sure we take care of the basketball. Actually, Michigan State averages 10 steals a game. They, they're going to press the entire game, so we can't be throwing it around. I thought yesterday in the second half we did a really good job of handling Northwestern's pressure. Um, Wednesday will be a little bit different. Michigan State will pick it up a little bit. It will be a little bit more intense. Um, so – if we can limit our live ball turnovers, not allow them to get out and transition and keep them off the glass, we'll give ourselves a chance. Well, you mentioned keep them off the glass, and that's one thing Michigan State really tends to do. Players like Tyre Parks are going to crash the offensive glass on you. Yeah, their bigs crash. Um, Joiner crashes from the from the perimeter. Um, you know, and then they've got you know you you take you've got to do your job of taking away transition threes, and then there's you're so vulnerable when you give up an offensive rebound, kick out three, and you just got you got to take those away from Michigan State. So we got to make sure we're, we're diligent and, and put a body on somebody every shot. As of yesterday, Susie Merchant was still not back with the Spartans. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, she had a medical incident uh, which caused her to have a car accident and the, which put her in the hospital for a while. And right now, Dean Lockwood is their acting coach. And I don't know if that will change before Wednesday, but uh, they've won some games here lately, and they've played a lot of close basketball games. Yeah, they've, they've, been, they've been right there. Even when they, they lost, they've been right there. Um, they took Iowa to overtime. Um, Nebraska jumped on them early, but they came they came roaring back, um, blitzed Wisconsin in there in the fourth quarter, and um, finished in overtime. You know, Sunday yesterday against Penn State. So, I think Dean will will be on the bench again, and and you know he's just as as good as Susie. Um, something about not having your head coach there, but uh, Dean Lockwood's been in this game for a long time, and he knows what he's doing. Then on Sunday, you get to go down to Bloomington, and we had a full house here at Mackey Arena when the Hoosiers came in. You're going to see a full house with 17,000 plus on senior day to take on the Hoosiers for the Barn Burner Trophy. Yeah, um, how cool is that? You know, two years ago, this team won seven games. And they played in front of 14, 8, 76 here at Mackey, and now we're going to play in front of 17,000 down there. Like, yeah. the experience that, that our, our young women are, are get, getting to, to have right now is, is really, really cool. And, uh, you know, obviously us selling out probably, you know, we gotta we got to – try to one-up the Boilermakers up there, but there's no pressure on us. We're going to go enjoy the atmosphere, um, hopefully go better than one for 17 in the third quarter, and uh, just, you know, play with our hearts, lay it all on the line, and, and see what happens. All right, we'll have the final segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. George has always been a big dreamer. He was talking about how he wanted to be the best NFL player when he hadn't even played 
a whole year of football. Let's go. Go Boilers. On the face of my city, co-signed by Diddy. Prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. That's big to me. People don't believe you. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna prove you wrong. Keep it in. Carlottis is there. George Carlottis, the freshman. The crown jewel of this Purdue recruiting class. <laughs> what a play George by George Carlottis. He just kept the relentless yeah. pressure. Yeah. He didn't slow down at all. It's loose. Carlottis has it. He's at midfield. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. Five. Touchdown, oh! Boilermakers. George Carlottis <laughs> on the fumble return. To NFL draft. The Kansas City Chiefs select George Karloftis. Wow. Defensive end, All Purdue. Right. I'm proud of that kid. It's hard to make it through as a rookie, period, 17 games. But to uh, get better every week at that position you know, is something. I mean, that's, uh, it's as much mental as it is physical, and, and he is relentless. You see him at practice. He goes 100 miles an hour at practice. He transfers that into games, so my hat goes off to him. It's Burrow facing the heat again. Karloftis, the rookie. <laughs>Products and services at PurdueFed.com. Different teams that you're playing this week, but I think one of the things that you're going to want to do is to give yourself an opportunity to not turn the basketball over and get some shots up at the basket. Yeah, uh, both games would be really good. Um, you know, we, we I think we're in the middle of the pack in field goal percentage in, in the Big Ten, about 43, 44%. So um, give ourselves some chances. Uh, you know, I think we lead the Big Ten in free throw percentage. So if we can – be aggressive, get into the get into the line and, and knock those down. We'll take them. We had the Lake Show and Kirby up here a little bit earlier, and, and I know it's really important for you when you put a staff together to get people in that you trust and you know will get, get the job done. And really both of those have – I think they've both fulfilled their roles really well this year. Yeah, I didn't expect anything differently. Um, those guys mean the world to me, uh, Lake and Kirby. You know, they bought into me immediately as a head coach uh, at Marion. I'd never coached before and bought into me and – uh, did everything I ever asked them to do, and uh, you know, it, it, in in any profession, but especially this one, it's not. You know, obviously you want some experience and all that stuff, but it, it's relationship. It's it's people you trust. It's it's um, you know having the right people around you that are that are you know are going to be on the same page. And uh, I mean that's that's a home run for us. And you get a lot of highs and lows. You had the as as a coach player relationship, and now you have it more as a as a peer, um, you've been through a lot of great times and a lot of tough times, and that really f strengthens the bonds. Yeah, you have to ask Kirby about the, the first day of conditioning her freshman year. I mean, she called home wanting to quit, so uh, we, we... She did we, not mention that during her <laughs> we, we talk about those, we, we, and, and honestly, we talk about so many funny things that, that have happened, and um, to, to be able to, to, to be player coach and you know, now be coworkers, but there's a there's a friendship and a love that that will that will I will just cherish forever. It is a special night coming up Wednesday night. We really want a big crowd out, not only because it's big against the Spartans, but also to honor the cancer survivors that are there. We're going to be talking with Dr. Knapp. And we'll run a halftime interview with her about the work that the Cancer Institute does here. Uh, really important night to get out. Yeah, just uh, come and pack the wear your pink, um, the whole play for K, and, uh, you know, we want to make sure we're, we're representing uh, Coach Kuchar just the same, too. See you Wednesday. Sounds good. Our engineer tonight, Wes Scott. Our producer, Roger Forsyth. We want to thank Hunter Massengill, as always, for video. The Boilermakers and the Michigan State Spartans coming up Wednesday for Mackey Arena. 7 o'clock tip-off. We'll be on there at 645. It's the Beat Cancer Pink Out game. For the head coach, for Anastasia Kirby, and for Lake and Hasser Smith, this is Tim Newton. Thank you for joining us. This has been the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Thank <laughs> you.